Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will actually revisit the Casimir operators. So, we need to actually make some observations about them. So, let us actually start with uh, uh, why we actually defined uh, Casimir operator. So, let uh, V being any finite dimensional G module. So, G you take it to be for example, uh, uh, any finite dimensional Lie algebra. So, you can also assume to be J L N or S L N. Okay. So, one can take any finite dimensional reductive Lie algebra or semi simple Lie algebra or here we can simply take G to be list J L N or S L N. So, now uh, if we have a finite dimensional uh, G module, uh, if we take any uh, G module homomorphism uh, from V to V, so let us call it omega, so it is uh, G module map. So, then we observe that uh, this omega actually commits with the action of G. So, because of that if we take any generalized eigenspace of omega that is going to commute with uh, the action of G sorry that becomes G sub module. Okay. So, if we take any so given any lambda in C, so let us take V lambda to be the generalized eigenspace corresponding to lambda for the operator omega. So, then it is a easy exercise to prove that V lambda is indeed G sub module. Okay. So, one can actually generalize this for uh, uh, other operators also. For example, if I, if I have some other operator phi, let us say defined from V to V, assume that phi and omega commutes. So, then if you take kernel of phi, so, which is uh, those vectors in capital V such that phi of V is 0. So, then you can see that this kernel phi becomes G sub module. So, this is just a map C map. Okay. Okay. This is supposed to be a G module map. So, let us write down what we want to do. Okay. So, we want to climb uh, this kernel phi to be actually uh, G module. Okay. So, let us take x uh, in G and v in kernel phi and then try to compute uh, uh, what happens and then see. So, let us assume that phi and omega actually commutes and omega is G, G module map. So, now uh, if we just compute uh, what will be the x v and then if I up if we apply phi. So, then you can see that the omega phi x v is nothing but phi of omega x v. So, now using that uh, x and the action of g commutes with omega or omega as a g module map you can see that this is exactly phi of x omega of v. So, now if we actually assume this x actually commits with this phi then you can just commute this x phi omega of v. Now, again phi omega commutes so it becomes x omega phi of v. So, then this becomes 0 because v is coming from the kernel. Okay. If you take this to be G model map, then phi and omega commutes, then it is easy to see kernel phi is indeed is a G model, G sub model. Okay. So, this is actually gives us a way to actually decompose V into G sub modules. If you take any G model map, if we look at uh, uh, generalized eigen subspaces and then we can write V as a direct sum of generalized, 
generalized eigen spaces for omega that is called primary decomposition of V with respect to omega and that gives you G model decomposition of V. Okay. So, that is why we were actually looking for some operators uh, that actually commits with the action of G. So, that was the motivation to look for the operators and then we define the Casimir operators uh, corresponding to some representations. So, now uh, let me make a theorem because this is whatever we observed is going to be a very important result uh, about uh, representations of G. So, let us uh, record it. So, let us call it a theorem. So, here we actually uh, work with a very general setting. So, let V be a finite dimensional G module and let B be a non degenerate non degenerate G invariant bilinear form. on G let us say. So, then uh, given a basis okay, let us fix some basis x 1 etcetera x n. So, this is the basis of G. So, we can actually talk about uh, dual basis of this. So, let us call it y 1 etcetera y n. So, now uh, so, this is with respect to the form. So, now we can define this Casper operator. So, define uh, let us define this Cosmere operator which is acting on this V. It is an endomorphisms which is given by summation x i y i of V where i range from 1 to n. This is you define for any V in capital. So, this is the formula that we have already seen defines the Casimir operators with respect to this bilinear form B that is defined on capital V. So, we already proved that uh, this in, this is indeed uh, a G module map okay, because it is coming from this uh, non degenerate uh, form. So, now uh, we are going to actually uh, see whether it depends upon the choice of the basis or not. Okay. So, we have made this choice. So, we can actually see it is indeed independent of the choice of the basis. So, one can prove that uh, the C B of V is a G module map. So, that is a first statement and not only that this is independent of the choice of the basis. So, that is independent of x 1 etcetera etcetera. Note that uh, once you fix x 1 etcetera x n then this y 1 etcetera y n that is uh, already fixed okay, with respect to this bilinear form B. So, so let us uh, verify this. So, we already did this calculation. So, that uh, C B of V is uh, indeed a G module map okay, that I will leave it to you to again check. So, now we will actually prove the second statement. The second statement is indeed telling that uh, if we may if we take actually another basis let us call it E z 1 etcetera E z 10 then then, uh, then if you define this uh, Casimir operator with respect to that. So, then uh, the value of this Casimir operator will not change. So, that is what we need to prove. Okay. So, more precisely, so let us prove the second statement. So, so let e z 1 etcetera e z 1 be another basis of capital V. So, and then we can actually fix u 1. etcetera u n to be its dual basis
So, now what we need to prove? We need to prove that if we take this uh, operator x i y i acting on v for this uh, summation x i y i, the value of this should be same as the value of z i u i acting on v. Okay. So, then this proves actually these two operators are same. So, that means the operator C V B is independent of the choice of the basis that we have chosen. So, this is uh, a simple computation basically we need to actually understand the transaction matrix uh, that one can actually uh, define for uh, this x i to uh, z i and then y i to uh, u i. So, let us actually call those matrices a and b and then actually uh, just uh, observe what will be the relationship between them. So, let us uh, uh, call this transition matrix okay, that actually maps x i to this z i. So, this matrix uh, we call it uh, A. So, this is the transition matrix. Okay, by definition, so you are writing z i s in terms of x j s. Okay. So, if you write z i s as uh, sum of x j s, then you have the coefficients, let them call that uh, a j i. So, that a j i forms the matrix capital A. So, this is z i equal to summation a j i x j, where j ranges from 1 to n. So, this matrix capital A is given by a i j. So, now if we take this uh, uh, y i's and then let us say the transaction matrix to be B which actually sends tran transfers uh, to u i's. So, then you can see that again by definition. So, this u uh, i is written by summation some B k i y k where k range from 1 to so, then B is given by this B k i. So, basically we are taking the translation matrix matrices of uh, this corresponding uh, base changes. So, now uh, let us compute uh, what will be the relations between the coefficients uh, A i j and B k j uh, using this uh, uh, bilinear form. We know that it is uh, G invariant symmetric bilinear form. So, G invariant symmetric and non-degenerate uh, bilinear form so because x i y j is a dual basis we know that the b of x i y j is given by delta i j similarly b of e z i u j is also given by delta i j so these relations we know and b of uh, Okay, let us uh, just start the computation. Uh, we want to just understand what is the relationship between B k i and A j i. So, let us let us look at this B of u i e z j. So, because the matrix is uh, the B is a symmetric bilinear form, this is same as B of e z j u i which is given by the coronal delta i j. So, this you can rewrite. So, now compute this. So, u i you can rewrite as this. So, this is summation b k i y k k range from 1 to n. Then you can rewrite e z j as summation a r j x r r range from 1 to n. Okay. Now, use the bilinearity and then just take out the coefficients and then you can see that. So, this is going to be delta i j equal to summation b k i a r j b of y k comma x r, but again b of y k comma x r will be delta. So, this is going to be equal to this quantity delta k r. So, here the sum runs over k and r which is running over from 1 to n. So, now you can see that whenever k equal to r you get exactly 
1 or otherwise this b of y k x r coefficients are 0. So, then you get exactly equal to summation b k i a k j where k range from 1 to n. So, basically this equation what it says. So, this equation actually tells you that uh, these uh, matrices A and B are closely related. Indeed, B is the inverse transpose of capital A. So, let us just write this. So, B is the inverse transpose of capital A. So, if we use this uh, thing and then if we calculate for any v in capital V, we can see that the summation tz i u i of v where i range from 1 to n. So, this is going to be exactly equal to summation. So, now we can write tz i and u i in terms of x i and y j's. So, just to use that formulas and then rewrite this. So, then you can see that this is exactly a k i b l i x k y l with acting on v where k i l all running from 1 to m. Okay. So, this just uses the formula e z i equal to summation a k i x k and similarly <coughs> ui is equal to summation b l i y l okay use this formula to get this so now we can actually see that this is exactly equal to so whenever whenever you see this uh, i j running over here so, B k i summation B k i A k j is going to give you delta i j. So, you are going to get exactly for uh, if you run it over i. So, then this is exactly summation k l runs over 1 to n delta k l x k y l v. So, which is exactly equal to summation x k y k of v where k range from 1 to 8. Okay. So, just we are using the relationship uh, between these uh, coefficients of capital A and uh, capital V. So, this proves that. So, this summation e z i u y acting on V is same as the summation x k y k acting on V. So, this proves that uh, as required the Casimir operator is well defined which is uh, independent of the basis that we, we choose in the beginning. So, these C B V they are all called Casimir operators so, this is we have already seen. So, now uh, once we have some non-degenerate uh, bilinear form on G uh, then we are able to actually create uh, Casimir operators. But the only thing that we do not know the whether these Casimir operators are 0 or non-zero. Okay. So, that is the non-trivial thing that we need to determine. Okay. So, that is why we used uh, for example, when uh, G is SLN, uh, we actually define the Casimir operator corresponding to the representation and then using that we, we actually saw that uh, uh, just to say the Casimir operator is uh, non-zero, uh, we, we needed to show that the corresponding uh, trace form is indeed non-degenerate. So, for that we had to use the non-trivial fact that uh, uh, the cotton criteria for the solubility okay, so that we could not avoid. So, it is indeed a big task to say this Casimir operators are non-zero. But uh, if given representation one will be able to compute it uh, uh, without any difficult. So, let us actually do that examples. So, so, le, so because we are only interested in uh, GLN or SLN, so let us do some basic computation. So, let us take uh, G to be GLN. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, we can take 
B to be the trace form. So, what that means uh, we can take B of x y to be just the trace of x y. Okay. So, J L and X C N X and C N naturally. So, basically uh, this trace form is uh, associated with that natural representation. So, we are treating elements of J L and S matrices that is all it means. So, if we take uh, this trace form and it is easy to see that this trace form is indeed non-degenerate. So, maybe I will leave it as exercise verify B is non-degenerate. So, not only that if we take the standard basis E i j. So, then it is dual will be E j i. What does it mean? So, if we take the trace of E i j E j i then you get exactly sorry we have to change the notations this is not what we meant. So, we take E i j. So, because the indexing set is just uh, i n cross i n. So, here the basis is we are talking about the basis of g l n. So, this is the basis. So, the indexing indexing set is i n cross i n which is 1 to 1 cross 1 to n. So, we have to actually take that. So, in particularly here we get E k l and then you get delta i j k l delta function defined on that okay. and this is easy to see actually. So, now uh, if we take this trace form then you can actually easily compute. So, what will be the Casimir operator corresponding to this trace form on the natural representation. Okay. So, G take V to be C n. So, G L n acts on C n and uh, this is uh, indeed irreducible module. So, it is G action is irreducible. So, now we know that uh, the Casimir element uh, must act as scalar on this G L. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check if we take this Casimir element with respect to this uh, trace form on this uh, representation C n. So, this is going to be n times identity on C n. Okay. So, this is what we get. Okay. So, we already know from Shu's lemma this must act as identity. So, it is not that hard to prove that this is indeed identity. So, another example again you take uh, G to be G L n and then now let us consider the tensor product. So, take the natural representation C n take the tensor product. So, let us uh, actually compute what uh, that if you compute uh, the Casimir operator again with respect to the trace form for this module. So, then you can prove that this is exactly equal to 2 n times identity operator plus twice sigma where sigma is the flipping operator on the tensor product. So, this is actually defined to be operator on the tensor where it switches first component and the second component. So, the transposition 1 2. Okay. So, if we take uh, this uh, Casimir operator uh, 
uh, then it has this very explicit form. So, it is not hard to prove that uh, this sigma is indeed a, a GLN uh, module map. Okay. Now, using this if we just actually compute, uh, okay, so prove this then compute the Eigen values, Eigen values of this Casimir operator. Then if you look at the generalized Eigen space decomposition, okay, so then you can see that, so the primary decomposition of this V comma this operator C trace C n tensor C n is going to give you exactly the usual decomposition that we know that is the sim 2 C n directs on the alt 2 C n. Okay. So, no, we already know that both of them are G modules. So, the primary decomposition of uh, uh, this operator uh, Casimir operator is going to give you C n tensor C n as direct sum of these two representations okay, as G modules. So, this is something uh, very interesting. So, it is important to actually understand uh, how given module actually decomposes into G sub modules. Okay. So, maybe you should actually uh, try to compute these things uh, even for SLN and so on. So, there are some natural representation that you can always define like uh, SLN acts on C n, SLN acts on C n tensor C n, even it acts on k folds tensor C n, uh, tensor C n up to k times, then you can actually take the trace form and then see like what you are getting and so on. Okay. So, main, so many examples one, one will be able to compute. So, we will be interested in the tensor product later. So, uh, we need to understand how uh, Casimir operators actually act on the tensor product. For that purpose, uh, let us record this uh, proportion, so which will be used later uh, to understand the tensor products. So, if we take V B V and W be two uh, GLN modules. Okay, so, again we are only dealing with the finite dimensional modules. So, then we can actually consider the tensor product and with respect to the trace form we can actually define Casimir operators. So, now if you think about it uh, then we have the following relationship. Okay, Let us uh, just denote uh, C V tensor W trace to be C, C V tensor W. So, the Casimir operator corresponding to the trace form on this V tensor W is just denoted by C V tensor W. Then it is easy to see that the trace of this divided by the dimension V tensor W which is we know already dimension V times dimension W. So, that is going to be exactly equal to trace of C V divided by dimension V plus the trace of C w, trace of C w divided by dimension w plus 2 divided by n trace of take this identity matrix and then make it act on v. Okay. So, we have this uh, representation Okay, if we, if we have this uh, map GLN to GLV, so we can actually denote the image by XV or XV. Okay, so then you can see that. Uh, so maybe I will drop this vertical line. So you can take this identity element here, and then you can look at its how it acts on capital V. And then you can take the trace of that and then you can also take trace of same identity element acting on W, then you divide by the dimension V times dimension W. Okay. So, this is the formula that you get 
between the trace of C tensor W and all tra trace of C V and so on. So, in particularly if you know trace of C V, trace of C W and uh, this trace of identity acting on V, identity matrix acting on V and trace of again identity matrix acting on uh, W. So, then we will be able to compute what is trace of C, C V tensor W. So, this is again uh, some simple computations, so but let us uh, prove this. So, we have to fix some notations. Uh, so, let us actually call the dimension of G L N to be just capital N which is small n square. So, we have a basis of G L N. So, what we do we choose this basis such a way that uh, uh, first capital N minus 1 elements actually corresponds to basis of S L N. So, we know that G L N is uh, S L N direct sum uh, this uh, identity matrix. So, if I take uh, this uh, basis, so we choose so that this n minus 1 becomes basis of S L N and then you set X n to be some multiple of identity. So, we will actually choose the scalar carefully, some multiple we want to choose. So, we will choose later. Okay, actually we can actually choose it to be uh, the dual actually. So, so we we are interested in the dual. So, okay, let us do the computation and then see what we want to choose. So, we have this basis. Uh, now, we can actually take this to be the dual basis. Of this x 1 etcetera x n again with respect to the trace form. So, I guess we can take this scalar to be just 1. So, now it is not hard to see this uh, the, the trace of any x in g x in s l n is 0. So, that means so, basically if I take this identity matrix look at set the orthogonal complement with respect to the trace form that is going to be S L N. So, because of that uh, since x 1 etcetera x n minus 1 is coming from S L N. So, that will imply that y 1 etcetera y n minus 1 is coming from S L N again. Okay. So, because they are orthogonal to each other S L N and this one dimensional center is they are orthogonal to each other. So, now if we just uh, calculate uh, you can easily see that uh, Y N should be exactly. So, basically the value should be B of X N Y N should be 1, but this is nothing but trace of identity. and this is going to be some scalar. So, this is uh, so the product. So, this is going to be exactly A times identity. So, this is N A. So, that implies A is just 1 by N. So, so this is going to be just 1 by N times identity. Okay. So, now with this let us compute what will happen to uh, the Casimir operator defined on V tensor W. So, let us say it is act on the standard basis. V i tensor which. So, this is going to be exactly summation x k y k act on v a tensor v j. So, let us call this v 1 etcetera v n is the standard basis. So, oh sorry we are given actually 
two modules V and W. So, we have to fix the basis. So, let us actually fix the basis. Uh, so, let us call V1 etcetera Vm to be the basis of capital V and then W1 etcetera Wp to be the basis of W. We know that V8 tensor Wj this becomes basis of V tensor W. So, this is something we are fixing. So, now if you do the calculation how it acts on the basis element C V tensor W acting on V A tensor W J. So, this is going to be given by this. So, this is exactly equal to because this uh, Y K X K they are going to act as derivation. So, if you just rewrite this, this is going to be summation X K Y K acting on V I tensor W J plus y k v i tensor x k w j plus x k v i tensor y k w j again plus. So, there will be 4 terms v i tensor x k y k w j. So, this is going to be the sum where k range from 1 to n which is n square. So, now you can see that this is exactly the action of uh, C v on uh, v i. So, this is going to be C v acting on v i tensor w j plus. So, this is going to be giving v i tensor C w acting on w j. So, v i tensor C w acting on w j. So, then we have this uh, these two sums. So, we just write it write them there y k v i tensor x k w j plus x k v i tensor y k sorry y k w j k range from 1 to n. So, this is exactly C V tensor W acting on V A tensor W J. So, now if you think about it, so this is let us say call it star. So, if we take the trace, the trace of the C V tensor W what it is going to be. So, we have computed how it acts on the basis, Okay, the indexing set being I J. So, now if you apply it on the basis element, then you have to look for the ijth entry of uh, the coefficient of the uh, basis element V i tensor W j in this expression star. Okay. So, if I take the trace, so basically you are going to sum over the diagonal terms. If you think about it, this is exactly the coefficient of the basis element V i tensor W j in star. Okay, because just the ith coefficient i. So, i j is the tuple where it is indexed on. So, you are looking at the coefficient of that i j th uh, basis element. So, if you just take this expression and then if you just think about it, then you can see that because this is the basis that corresponds to the tensor. So, so then that means, uh, so this is going to give you exactly for each j you are going to get uh, corresponding to C v of V i. So, you will get exactly the trace of C v and for each i you are going to get uh, uh, trace of C w. So, that means, so this is exactly going to be equal to P times trace of C V plus M times trace of C W and then plus summation K range from 1 to N. So, if you take this expression, you can see that here you will be getting 
trace of yk and then here you are getting trace of xk. So, it is the product because it is a tensor product. So, this is exactly trace of ykv times the trace of xkv plus the trace of xkv times the trace of ykv. So, this is what we get from this base. So, now uh, like I said we have chosen this x i's and uh, y i's uh, to be very specific uh, elements. So, now it is not hard to see that because S L n is indeed uh, equal to its derived algebra. So, that means if we take any element x v where x is coming from S L n the trace of x v should be 0. Okay because uh, whenever g is being its derived algebra bracket gg then x comes from g implies the trace of x v is 0 whenever that g acts on the representation capital V. So, this is a small observation. So, if you use that observation then you can see that uh, whenever we take uh, x and y is coming from that uh, sln. So, the trace of the corresponding elements will become 0. This trace, this trace, this trace, this trace will become 0. So, what survives only that uh, identity matrix element. So, basically this is gives you this is the dimension of W times the trace. So, this is the trace of C V plus dimension V times trace of C W. So, then the place 1 to n minus 1 capital N minus 1 will all vanish. So, only the trace of the identity matrix which survives that is the identity element acting on V times the trace of identity matrix acting on this uh, sorry this should be So, this is acting on W. So, this should be W and this should be W. So, this is acting on W plus trace of again for N identity matrix acting on V times trace of identity matrix acting on W. So, this is exactly giving you oh sorry. So, x n is the identity, but y n is 1 by n times identity. So, you get 1 by n here and 1 by n here. So, if you if you put them together you can see that the trace of the trace of C V tensor W is given by dimension W trace C V plus dimension V trace C W plus 2 divided by N trace the identity on V trace identity acting on W. Okay. So, now you rewrite the formula rewrite the formula using dimension v tensor w equal to dimension v times dimension w then you get the original formula. So, then you get this formula. Okay. So, this actually completes the proof. So, we will be using later uh, these formulas uh, to actually understand the tensor product of uh, irreducible representations. Okay, so, this actually kind of uh, uh, completes uh, what I wanted to tell about uh, Casimir operators. Okay, I will uh, stop here. Thank you, I will stop here.